Esta es una presentación, es una presentación que hice way back en 2006, hace 12 años. Le agregué cosas, I added things to it, and it was for an international congress of uh, cochineal and natural colors. So the the theme, el tema es natural dyes and, envi and the environment challenges towards a sustainable use. Colorantes naturales y medio ambiente retos hacia un manejo sustentable. So what are we going to look at? What, que, de qué tamaño es el mundo del tinte natural o de los pigmentos y tintes naturales? How, how, how broad is this? Pues, the first thing is, lo primero es que hay, there's a relationship between culture, environment, and economic development. Hay un, un vínculo entre cultura, medio ambiente y desarrollo económico. Hay una problemática, there are problems that we have to focus on and we have to look at. And, uh, and the two big areas, las dos grandes áreas son los artesanos y los recursos naturales, artisans and natural resources, and artisans, technology, and health. And you must, be, you, you must be wondering, what? Where does that come from? So that's, this is how I'm going to try to take you into this world of sustainability. No, los voy a tratar de llevar por el mundo de la sustentabilidad. Y claro, también, todo lo que tiene ver con, que ver con eh, legislación. Okay. Now, ¿qué es? Don't read, no, no vean eso porque si no, van a estar leyendo y no escuchando. Este, hay un muy marcado, una marcada tendencia a la pérdida de los conocimientos tradicionales, de los usos de los, pigment, de los materiales naturales. There's a very marked tendency to the loss of the use of natural dyes and pigments. Y lo que lo ocasionó fue el descubrimiento en 1856 de los eh, sintéticos. The, the discovery of synthetic dyes in 1856, mauve, la malva, fue the first synthetic dye ever made. Y de ahí, shh, and so it was marvelous, era una maravilla, porque ya con polvitos mágicos, with, with aniline dyes that were sold in bags, que se vendían en bolsitas, pues ya era muy fácil teñir y la gama de colores era increíble. En los 70s, en 1970s, all of a sudden people started saying, la gente empezó a decir, oigan, ¿y lo natural? What about natural? What about the natural dyes? What's happening there? And it came very much, it became more in vogue in the 80s. En los 80s fue cuando esto ya, la gente ya estaba pidiendo There was a big uh, thrust, a big interest in, in the natural dyes. Entonces, lo que pasó fue que surgieron maestros, there were a lot of teachers, instructores, que decían, yo sé teñir con tinte natural. Y cada quien hacía y hace, and they give their courses, and then uh, the people learn, relearn, o sea, es un reaprendizaje de estos tintes. Some are very traditional, algunos son muy tradicionales y otros son nuevos, porque salen al campo a buscar flores o árboles o cortezas. They go out and look for regional resources and they say, you know, you can die with this too. Entonces, este, no hay un protocolo, there isn't a set protocol, no hay reglas, there aren't rules. And not because we want everything to become Uh, entrenched in rules, but there are reasons, and that's what we're going to see today. Si esta falta de protocolos está llevándonos a una situación delicada de un posible, una sobre, sobre explotación, an overharvesting of things. And so, um, the environmental impact, el impacto ambiental del uso de los tintes naturales es algo... I've been working on this for 20 years, 20 años llevo, y lo escuchan, pero no lo aterrizamos. You know, people are listening, but it's not really getting down to things, and purpura, you saw yesterday, purpura, there we did all of the legal things, and we're still not saving it, ¿no? A veces trabajas todo lo legal y ni así lo puedes eh, eh, terminar de rescatar. So, I have a saying. 
no por natural es sustentable. No por natural es sustentable. Que en in English would be natural is not equal to sustainable. What has the advertising world done and the corporate world done? ¿Qué han hecho el mundo del, de la publicidad y de las grandes corporaciones con la comida, with food? Natural, natural. Y ahí vamos, y lo agarramos, ¿no? Ah, ya, yeah, estoy siendo muy consciente. I'm being conscientious because I found the label, encontré la palabra natural. Pues no. Y creo que that's my most important message. Ese es mi mensaje más importante de lo que yo quiero compartir con ustedes hoy, that I want to share with you today. Tenemos que irnos para atrás. We have to go back. Y tenemos que entender los procesos y tenemos que entender de dónde vienen las cosas. We have to understand where things are coming from, the process, before we can say, Eureka, bravo, ya logramos... Eh, la sustentabilidad de los recursos. Entonces, tenemos la necesidad de conocer las materias primas. The raw materials, we have to know what they are. And the, the management of, of uh, chemical substances, that's the other thing. La, el, el manejo de sustancias tóxicas. In the end, todo lo que está en torno a este manejo sustentable, everything that, that surrounds sustainable management in this, in this area, is going to impact, va a impactar um, environmental health, la, la salud ambiental, occupational health, la salud laboral, and public health, y sal la salud pública, que es de los consumidores. Occupational health, la salud ocupacional, son los problemas de salud de quienes están produciendo. And environmental health, la salud, la salud ambiental, es qué pasa con estos recursos naturales. Vamos a ver, yo tengo identificado cinco tipos de situaciones, five situations, ¿no? So the first is, oh, I can't see the, what's there. Ah, lo primero son, ah, Thank you. <laughs> lo primero, the things that we have to be most, most concerned with, lo más preocupante, son los silvestres. Those resources that are in the wild. Because, what happens? ¿Qué pasa si los tomamos? Nos los vamos acabando. We're, we're going to... Which are, ¿Cuáles son estos tintes o estos materiales que son silvestres? A ver, ideas. Give me ideas of which are the, are, are the resources from the wild. No, no. ¿Planta? Depende. Los voy a dejar. I'll leave you with that. No, I, we'll go into it right now. No, no. In the wild, silvestre quiere decir que el, el ser humano, humans, have not been able to domesticate it, to cultivate it. Silvestre quiere decir que no ha sido cultivado. Los árboles, most of the trees, la mayor parte de los árboles son silvestres. Very few examples have been domesticated. Muy pocos han sido domesticados. Entonces, eh, tenemos que saber, we need to know what the species is, qué especie es, y dónde está, where it stands in terms of domestication and resource management. To be able to say, there's no problem here, no hay problema. So we'll be looking at that little by little. Now, sometimes, There's ethnobiological knowledge. A veces hay conocimiento etnobiológico que vimos con púrpura. It's in the wild, es silvestre, and it'll go into the second category. So I won't say more. And sometimes people used to know. La gente sabía los... Había sabiduría. No, pues es que solo hay que quitar the branches, las ramas, no el árbol. 
hay que usar las hojas, no lo otro. Es decir, there was a conception, había una concepción y un conocimiento, knowledge, 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 de qué sí funcionaba y qué no, para que a lo largo del tiempo, so that over the centuries, you would still have the resource. Y los grandísimos riesgos are the rupture, la ruptura del equilibrio. Because, como natural se volvió de moda, pues ahí vamos, ahí vamos al cerro, al monte, a recolectar y a decirle a nuestros clientes, and to tell our clients, todo natural. The other thing that was known, lo otro que en el conocimiento construido era how much you could take out, cuál era el ciclo de extracción que iba a permitir que se regenerara, that would allow it to regenerate. And when things become too popular, cuando se vuelve famoso algo, se pierde, la tendencia es perder estos conocimientos, this, this knowledge tends to be lost. El otro problema que he visto, the other problem that I've noticed, and not just with dyes, no solo con, con tintes, sino con muchísimos materiales naturales, with natural materials used for crafts, usados en la arsania, es lo que yo llamo una baja percepción de escasez, a very low perception of what scarcity means. And so what I did was I started asking questions. Empecé a crear como un, un, una serie de preguntas. Cuando tu abuelita, when your grandmother, ¿a dónde encontraban el recurso? How close, qué tan cerca, how close to the community was the resource? Ah, it was in our backyard. Ah, estaba en nuestro acahual, estaba aquí. Cuando tu mamá, ah, no, pues ya teníamos que caminar dos horas. Y ahora, no, es que ya tenemos que caminar ocho horas. And that's the way, es la manera en que trabajo la percepción de escasez. The farther they have to go, if it was right at their reach, and they have to go farther and farther, we have a problem. No, es, es casi parece, it's almost like logical, but things aren't always so logical. Pareciera lógico y no siempre lo es así tan lógico. Ahora, ¿qué hemos visto? que as, as this happens, when it gets farther and farther away, I mean, one of the best examples, uno de los mejores ejemplos que hemos estudiado y trabajado, es el papel amate. La fibra para el papel amate. We worked on it for years. Y eh, de San Pablito, you know, the paper cutouts, there, there's somebody here. And, uh, y lo que encontramos en los ochentas, what we found in the 80s was, that había surgido un especialista, a specialist had, had uh, arisen, and he, he was, he's known as a jonotero, se le conoce as the jonote gatherer. And San Pablito is in the mountains of Puebla. San Pablito está en la, en la Sierra Norte de Puebla. They were traveling to Guatemala, estaban viajando hasta Guatemala. Los jonoteros, not the artisans, no los artesanos para conseguir el amate blanco de un ficus, from a ficus, uh, ficus tree, they had to go all the way to Guatemala, porque ya se había acabado en todo el intermedio, in the whole intermediate zone. And then somebody from Mexico City, unos artistas, said, ah, es muy fácil, pongan cloro. And you can blanquear, pónganle cloro and chlorine, and no, not chlorine. Clorox. And so the brown, la, la, la corteza café, se va a volver blanca. And then somebody said, well, we're having trouble, estamos teniendo problemas para extraer la fibra, to extract the fiber. Ah, sosa cáustica. Caustic so sauce. No, soda. Caustic soda. Y va a ablandar la otra especie que es más dura. So imagine, well, ya estamos hablando de un problema de impacto ambiental, you have to go farther and farther, hay que ir más lejos por la fibra, estamos hablando de las sustancias tóxicas, y en peroles, cocidos en peroles, all of the fumes, todos los vapores, para las mujeres, porque son las mujeres las que hacen el papel. 
y agarran el perol, they, they take their, their caso, ¿no? Y lo tiran, nada más le hacen así, ¡fum! a la tierra. And where does that go? It goes, ¿a dónde se va? To the water levels, to the rivers, etc., etc. And so, as you go down the river, you've got other problems. And this is basically the problem with a lot of these natural dyes and, and processes. The second, el segundo, domesticados, cultivados, cultivated. These are uh, the process, the, the, the most important process over time of human knowledge. Lo más increíble del conocimiento humano es cuando logran domesticar, when, when human people are able to domesticate, and, and that's the best. I mean, that's what would be ideal, sería lo ideal for everything. Now, um, indigo, añí, es domesticado. Cochinilla es domesticada. Sí, es más, sí se da en la naturaleza, you'll find it in the wild, but the best, la que tiene la mejor calidad, en los dos casos, es la domesticada. Because it, that it becomes a resource where the human hand and knowledge build on nature, mejoran a la naturaleza. So, these are ideal, son muy buenos tintes, por lo mismo. And, uh, well, I already talked about it. cómo surgieron los tintes sin sintéticos de synthetic ones. Now, hay un tercero, there's a third kind of situation with dyes and pigments, donde hay un manejo. It's in the wild, es silvestre, pero el conocimiento humano, human knowledge, allows people to understand, comprender management, el manejo del recurso. So, se está cuidando el recurso, no se está sobreexplotando, they're watching the, the resource and they're not over-harvesting. Um, this happens a lot with aquatic plants, con plantas acuáticas, tules, carrizos, split cane, um, things for, for basketry, nopales. In other words, they're not domesticated 100%, but they are propagated by, by people. Son propagados, mas no domesticados. Y, um, and then we have cases, the, no, the nopales, and especially the magueyes, especialmente los magueyes, tiene que, la planta tiene que soltar sus hijitos, it has, las semillas, la planta, el quiote, suelta la semilla, in, in the case of agaves, you get the quiote, you know, the long thing, and that's where the seeds are. And the seeds are dispersed, and then the seeds have to what we say in Spanish, pegar. The seeds have to uh, spring their, their, their uh, offspring, tienen que salir los hijuelos, y luego son trasplantados. En eh, para todo el paisaje del, del maguey, de, este, um, de los magueyes para el tequila, when you go into this area of los altos de, de Jalisco, you see how it's all set in, in uh, rows, ¿no? Es, está puesto, pero no, no lo sembraron así. Uh, they, they haven't been able to break, no han podido lograr el, el cultivo completo. So they have to have the plantings y luego lo trasplantan. So that's what we would call semi-cultivado o de, o de manejo. And then we have a, a new offshoot, tenemos algo nuevo, que son ecoproductos. What are ecoproductos? What are the, the eco-products? Usually it's something, it's a program, a project in and around uh, natural parks, or natural, uh, what would you call them? Um, reserves, sí, en las reservas naturales. The government establishes, establece el gobierno los recursos que hay que cuidar, the ones that have to be watched. And so then there are a series of um, 
there, there are a series of uh, considerations for certification. Para certificar, o hay condiciones. They say you can use so much of this tree or so much of this plant in a year. En un año se puede usar tanto. And this would be very good if it permeated towards the rest of society. Sería bueno que toda la sociedad pudiera tener este tipo de certificación, que es otro asunto. And the fifth is something that we can't control. No lo podemos controlar. The non-renewable resources. Los recursos no, no renovables. Barro. All of the clays are non-renewable. They're not being made in nature. They were formed over millions of years. Se formaron a través de los siglos o los milenios. Las canteras, the stones, rocks, you know, every, the, what they do the metates with, those are non-renewable resources. Lo bonito, lo, la ventaja es when they're very ab abundant in nature. Cuando son abundantes, pues no nos preocupamos, ¿verdad? Este, the other things that have to do with dyes, los que tienen que ver con tintes son los colorantes, los colorantes, mordentes, entonadores, minerales. Most of the minerals that are used in dyes and in the, um, the, the mordants and the in color enhancers. Um, óxido de hierro, which in English is iron oxide. Muy común en la naturaleza y muy común en el barro. They use it as a slip in el barro. It's used and not so much for textiles because it's not, it doesn't dilute. No, no se usa tanto en los textiles porque no se diluye, pero sí en muchas de las artesanías que llevan pigmentos, alumbre, alum, as a, como un elemento de, de este, ay, ¿cómo se llama? It's, it's the most widely used, um, ah, mordant, thank you, thank you, mordente. Eh, the color, el óxido de hierro, alumbre, and uh, tartar, cremor tartaro. Th those are not as, eh, no, hay, hay mordentes that are chemicals and they're toxic, y hay otros that are natural and they're not as, uh, don't pose problems down the line. So, what is it that we did in the 80s? ¿Qué hicimos nosotros as a non-profit organization? We sort of made a plan, hicimos como un plan bueno. Si queremos certificar, if we want to certify the, the natural resource management, how big is the project? ¿De qué tamaño es el proyecto? And it's scary, asusta un poco. So, tenemos una parte de investigación, you have research and you have resource management y manejo. So the, one of the things that we did, and we got a grant, was a national inventory of natural resources used in artesanía. We got a grant from the then uh, newly established National Center for Conavio, Consejo Nacional para el Uso de la Biodiversidad, Biodiversity Center, no? We got a grant and we went out and did an inventory, an inventory that had 1,200 uh, plants and other things, 1,200. And we, we, we really don't think that we were, we were able to do it all. I mean, es nada, 1,200. But they're the ones that were being used the most. Eran los de mayor uso, no? So that's, that's on the database of Conabio. It's up there on the... Then we realized that once you had an inventory, ¿qué es lo más importante en todo esto? Conocer la especie botánica. You have to know what the botanical uh, species, what it is. If not, you're going to run into the problem of synonymias, syn synonymous terms. Ah, pues aquí le dicen, um, por decir, Um, pues, uh, palma. Ah, pero allá le dicen yuca. Pero allá le dicen no sé qué. 
or, or pita, la palabra pita, is terrible because it's a generic. Ah, es pita. No, well, yeah, but what pita? So you have to go that far back if you really want to start a sustainable use of the resources. Entonces, tenemos que conocer la especie. Luego, we need to do three kinds of studies, tres tipos de estudios. Is there knowledge, hay conocimiento tradicional, traditional knowledge, for managing that resource? And we have to put it down, we have to talk to the older people, hay que hablar con la gente grande, platíquenos. ¿Cómo se hace un uso sustentable de este recurso? ¿O cómo hacían? Then we do in parallel scientific studies, estudios científicos. Not because these aren't scientific, they're ethnobotanic studies, son ethnobotanicos. I hate the word, um, ah, what's the word? That something, wait, I'm thinking. In <laughs> Ni en inglés ni en español, ya se me, se me cruzaron los cables. <laughs> Empirico. Empirical knowledge, my dear friends, is a very discriminatory term. Es muy discriminatorio empírico. Porque dice que no es científico. Uh -huh. sí, lo que, que lo único que vale es la ciencia occidental. So we have tried, no, it isn't, knowledge is not based on Western history, no? So we have been very careful to talk about ethnobotany or ethno biology because purpura was where I learned about the value of traditional knowledge. Fue en el proyecto del purpura that we, que hicimos el proyecto de conocimiento etnobotanbiológico y el conocimiento científico and los mixtecos conocen el 98% de lo que tienen que saber. They know 98% of what they need to know in the life cycle of purpura. What they don't know, que lo comentó ayer Patrice, is the planktonic, eh, el, la, el paso planktónico, ¿no? So, the third thing you have to study, lo tercero que se tiene que estudiar es, ¿cuál es, what is the health of the resource? ¿Cuál es la salud que, que tiene el recurso? Que sería el impacto ambiental. ¿Hay un impacto ambiental o no lo hay? Is there, Is there already a, a, an impact on the environment or not? To get what? Para llegar a qué? Resource management programs. Programas de manejo. Sin mane programas de manejo, no avanzamos. And projects to do propagation and reforestation. And tratar de llegar al cultivo. I mean, to have money put into more experimentation in cultivation. Where, where do you put your, donde pones la atención y los recursos? ¿Quiénes tienen que participar? Artisans, the ones who are becoming specialists in, in uh, recollecting, the providers and the owners of the land. Because we discovered, descubrimos, when we did a study in Tabasco, I don't know if you've seen those curtains, made out of a aquatic plant. I don't know if they get here. They're, made, they're, they're curtains, son unas cortinas de, de un tipo de tule, de Tabasco, los venden los de Veracruz. And we went to Tabasco to work to find out. Hicimos un, un, una evaluación de the, the, the health of these. And they had gone de este tamaño, ya estaban de este tamaño. So yes, ya teníamos un problema, no? We could tell that there was a problem. So we talked to the people that were recollecting, los recolectores, and they said to us, but we don't own the land. No somos los dueños de la tierra, nos dan permiso. They give us permission to go into the river or to where the resource is. And what you want to do, lo que ustedes quieren hacer, un programa de reforestación o de manejo, pues tienen que hablar con el dueño de la tierra, somebody else. So, that there. Then we need investigate researchers, ethnobiologists, uh, botanical gardens and herbariums, chemical laboratories to do studies, and we need to work with social, private, and public sectors. 
That's a humongous undertaking. Les juro que es muy grande. How do you break it down? ¿Cómo, cómo hacerlo viable por especie? By case studies. Because if you want to do 1,200 plants all together, you're not going to get very far, no? La que sigue. And where is the problem with the, the uh, health and technology with these um, invisible materials? What are the, in, in the, when you're looking at a piece of pottery, does anybody have a piece of pottery on them? No, you're not carrying your pottery, okay? <laughs> Glazed pottery, no? Una olla este, engretada. Does it have lead? Doesn't it have lead? Tiene plomo, no tiene plomo. They can put lead free. Do you know? No, no, no hay manera de saber. Jewelry, acids for metals, la joyería, todo lo que es metal conlleva el uso de muchos químicos, muchas sustancias químicas. No los ves. Finished project, product, you don't see it, no se ve. Los, do, los cloros, los mordentes para la, for, for um, what do you call, curtiduría, tanning. Tanning, muy contaminante. Los tintes and los vapores dañinos. O sea, el impacto. El problema con todos los insumos químicos, with all of the chemicals used in different, in the, in the, in the elaboration of various crafts, is that they're invisible to the finished product. El producto final no lo sabes. Que tienes nuevamente, again, you have to go back. So, uh, I already talked with the example of, of, the, of um, amate, con amates, I, I explained how you can impact all three areas of environmental health, public health, and occupational health. La que sigue. And with artisans and legislation, artesanos y legislación, who do the resources belong to? De quien son los recursos? In Mexico, they belong to the nation. Son propiedad de la nación. Not, not plants, but anything that's mineral, petroleum, all of that is the property of the nation. Es el propiedad de la nación. And um, I once called, I was very worried, estaba muy, muy preocupada, porque en Tonalá, toda la zona de Tonalá, Tlaquepaque, Santa Cruz de las Huertas, had, tenían, los mejores barros y engobes del mundo had the best uh, clays and slips of the world and they were building on top of them estaban con, están están construyendo haciendo su, sus fraccionamientos on these wonderful hills and the artisans kept telling me es que ya no hay no hay we have to go farther and farther to find some of these these um, mines where, where they are. So I called something called the Consejo de Recursos Minerales, the National Council for, for Natural Resources. Buenas tardes, buenas tardes. <laughs> Mire, tenemos un problema, we have a problem in the Tonalá area and other communities with their, their um, clay banks. Ah, oh, yes, uh -huh. And I'd like to know if, like a mine, como una mina, if we can register it. De, de, um, we can have it registered of it being important culturally and historically. No? De uso, de uso. Oh, how interesting, antropóloga. <laughs> Qué interesante, antropóloga. End of, and end of conversation, no? So, Para ellos, minas son oro, plata, plomo, you know, those are the big mines and where the mining interests are. ¿A quién le importa unos bancos de barros y arcillas? So, we still have to work on it. Todavía tenemos que ver how to declare, cómo lograr declarar y proteger lo que queda, what's left, no? So, it goes that far back. And there's a lot of, uh, right now, a lot of talk about uh, different kinds of authorial rights. Hay mucha plática ahorita sobre registros y 
tipos de, de protección de propiedad, denominación de origen, marca colectiva y todo esto. However, I think that the real, real problem está en cómo certificamos, how do we certify that what is being, what you're being sold, lo que te están vendiendo es natural dyes, natural dyes, natural pigments, is what they're telling you it is. Sí, el, el gran reto está en cómo sabes, cómo tienes la certeza de que te, lo que estás comprando es lo que te dicen. Y es un gran problema. It's a big problem, porque it has to be tested. Se tiene que hacer un análisis en laboratorio para ver si sí o si no. Imagínense lo que esto implica en costo. Y se ha atorado, and that's why it's gotten stuck all over the world. There is not an easy way. Um, so, some of the resources are, are in uh, the Mexican Endangered Species Act. So, if it's on this, uh, the Endangered Species Act, si está en especie protegida, ese es el primer problema. So, tienes que conocer, you have to know what's in the Species Act. Púrpura is in the, the Endangered Species Act. El púrpura está en la norma oficial mexicana. Pero hay tres categorías. There are three, maybe four categories, which is high risk, alto riesgo, en, peligro, en, en danger of extinction. Then you have the second category, en la segunda categoría que es endangered, o sea, en riesgo. And then you have a category, hay una categoría que dice protegida sujeta a permiso especial. Protected subject to a special permit. And I have had the honor of participating in two cases, in dos casos. Well, Púrpura, we created it. Because con el caso de Púrpura, we were able to prove that the Mistec Indians knew how to manage the resource. That our uh, scientific studies mirrored the uh, ethnobiological knowledge and that the self-bans, las auto, autovedas impuestas por los mixtecos eran la base del manejo sustentable. Now they had three self-bans, which were uh, only die between October and March, solo teñir de octubre a marzo. Luego, solo ir cada 28 días. Yesterday they talked about el ciclo lunar. Y el tercero, no teñir con un caracol menor de 3 centímetros. Entonces, those three soft bands, scientifically, científicamente lo que nos demostraron fue between April and October, de abril a octubre, se está reproduciendo la especie. The species is in active reproduction. Some of them reproduce all year, but active reproduction is that period. Entonces, están en reproducción, no los toques. Don't touch them. Those, why every 28 days? ¿Por qué cabe? Because, as uh, was said yesterday, it takes, it doesn't take 28 days for it to regain its, its uh, die. No se lleva 28 días. Takes 10 days. But es un arma de protección. So they eject it to protect themselves against uh, other crabs and other... Th it's also used for, for um, the... against depredadoras, uh, depredadores. Y también, in 28 days, you're going to get the maximum. Vas, vas a, a obtener el máximo cantidad de, la máxima cantidad de tinta. Then, and the third one, which was el tamaño, is it the mistake know that a, three, a less than three centimeter species, or uh, uh, snail, is a juvenile, es juvenil. Su tinta no es, no, no es buena. That it's not complete. So those three self-bans allowed us to promote 
protected, protegido con sujeto a, a permiso especial. The other species I worked on was palo fierro from Sonora, the ironwood from Sonora. If it was in the hands of the Sedi Indians, the thing is that the, the, the mestizos came in, learned, and then brought in machinery to do gigantic pieces. In the Sedi, we're doing one by one, by the hand, and they were only using dead trees. Solo estaban usando eh, árboles muertos. Y ironwood es olneya tesota, 800 years for it to reach its maturity. Es un árbol que tarda 800 años. Entonces, when they started doing it in, in cantidades masivas, they discovered something. Descubrieron algo. If they put a chain, si ponen una cadena a la base del árbol, around the, the base of the tree, and with a pickup truck, pull, they kill the root. And they produce the death of the tree. Entonces, I won't go, I won't say anything more. I think it's all said there, la que sigue. This is, this is just, es algo que dice, ¿cómo podemos llegar? How could we come to a certification of natural dyes? Well, are these, son recursos silvestres? Está difícil. Son con manejo, well, a little better. Domesticated the best. But what's the story with cotton? ¿Qué pasa con el algodón? It's the most contaminating of all of the natural fibers that are cultivated. Es el más contaminante de todas las fibras. ¿Por qué? Because when you have a plantation, cuando tienes una plantación, all the pests, todos los bichitos lo atacan. And so then, what do they do? The planes come over and put DDT, el DDT, no? Entonces, you don't have a very sustainable cotton if you're doing all of that. You would need to go to organic cotton. Tendrías que irte al cultivo orgánico, que es costoso, it's expensive to go to organic. There are places where it's being done. Then you have the dyes, si son químicos los tintes, ese es un problema. Then you have the legislation. So in order to be able to say that in natural dyes and textiles we have a clean industry, you have to attend 10 different things. So one of the things that, that we've been promoting with a lot of problems, hemos estado tratando de promover con muchísimos problemas, es un protocolo. A Mesoamerican, I'm not even talking about the world, a Mesoamerican protocol towards the sustainable use of dyes and mordants. And, um, and what we want to do is not compromise the future of the, of the planet. I mean, you can't, no pido nada, I'm not asking for anything. Well, now we have the contamination in the oceans and poor turtles you know, dying on this and on that, and this is just one more. It's uno más de todos nuestros este, aspectos. And certification. I know that in Teotitlán del Valle, in Teotitlán, they've tried to do it. Han tratado de hacerlo. Pero it's not in everybody's interest. No está en el interés de todos. Entonces, you run, you run up against barriers, no? Barreras de... How can you certify and not have to test every dye bath? ¿Cómo vas a certificar sin necesariamente mandar al laboratorio todo? There has to be a whole sense, un sentido and a whole sense of ethical, of something that's based on la ética del presente y el futuro, of present and, and the future. So I'm going to go quickly about just to give you some images, no, un poco de imágenes. Las fibras, fibers, some are easier to dye with and others are more difficult to dye with. And Ixle is uh, based on cellulosa. It's a cellulose-based fiber. 
And here we see how they're spinning with a pre-Hispanic spindle in the va valley of uh, Valle de Mezquital in Hidalgo. This, you've all probably seen this plant. It's like a spaghetti, an orange spaghetti. I don't know if it's here in, um, in Jalisco. And it's called the matapalo. It's, it's a resource that will choke whatever it, it goes or falls on. And um, it's called Cuscuta Americana. Zacatlascali, um, and it grows very much. No studies have been done on its cycle. I mean, los biólogos no han tenido el cuidado, or we haven't been able to orientar a los biólogos and the agronomists to do a study. How can we manage cuscuta sustainably? No hay, no, no hay los estudios. Ethnobotanically, los conocimientos de la gente te dicen, what they tell you is, never pick the whole thing. No te lleves todo. Deja que una parte se seque en la planta. Let some of it just dry. And the next season, the next raining season, it'll sprout back. No? So that's where ethnobiological knowledge is something that we should be listening. La que sigue. Here we see uh, Nicolasa, and she's going to dye the Ixle. Ixle, some, look at this beautiful gold yellow, un, un or, oro amarillo, oro, con el Ixle. Okay. This is a yuca. You know yucas, don't you? And here's a problem. They don't use nose on the top of the yuca. They use the root of the yuca. So, you can maybe take a little bit of the root of one plant and then go to the next plant and then go to the next plant. But if you just take all of the root, well, I don't even have to tell you what happens, ¿verdad? <laughs> este, la que sigue. Cochinilla, which they tried growing cochinilla in the Valle del Mezquital. We, we tried doing a whole revival project. But I don't know if you know that cochinilla is a Plague, a plaga is the word plague? It's a pest. Okay, it's una plaga, el coch la cochinilla. Que ataca al nopal, it attacks the nopal, and it eats off the sap of the nopal. And so then if you want to, that's one pest. Sometimes people who are growing nopal as, a, as an edible plant take the pest away. Goodbye, goodbye cochinilla. And so others, if you want the cochinilla, then you let it reproduce. However, um, it is attacked by other pests. Hay, la cochinilla misma tiene a otros bichitos que la atacan. So imagine, no, there is, no hay una, una, what was it when you, this horrible kind of a bomb that just will kill the humans and not everything around it? Um, neutron, bomb. neutron bombs. No tenemos bombas neutrones para controlar the pests of the pests. So everything has to be done by hand. Hand pick your, your control. And what we found in the Valle del Mezquital is that the pests just attacked the cochinilla. And also there are two kinds of cochinillas. There's the domesticated and there's the wild. And la silvestre. And the silvestre is very strong. Muy fuerte la silvestre. Y se come, it'll eat up the domesticated very easily. And it doesn't have as much carmen for it. No tiene tanto carmín. So, tener la mejor cochinilla is now being done in a different way, sort of in invernaderos, in... in, in um, nurseries kind of things where they'll try to take, not let the, uh, the pests in, para que no entren los, las pests. Here, palo de Brasil, Brazil wood, you, you can buy it as a medicinal plant, as a, in, in the medicinal area of, a, of the, um, uh, what do you call these, the DDD? medicinal plant places, no? El problema, the problem with the Brazil wood, it's fairly quick, se crece bastante rápido. The problem is that when, they, when you buy it just anywhere, you're getting different parts of the tree. It's, it's really a shrub, not a tree. And you're not getting the heart, which is where the dye is. 
So in order, the best thing is to work with the communities that have it. La que This is something that we did. We did product development with uh, Ixle products and we dyed them. This is with Brazil wood and this is with cochinil. Indigo, no indigo in Valle Mesquital, so you need indigo to be grown somewhere. And the only place left in Mexico is Tehuantepec. El único lugar que queda en México es el es Tehuantepec. This is what we did in the Valle del in the Valle del Mezquital with Ana Roquero, one of the great, well, she's the, the greatest of the natural dye per, the knowledgeable people from Spain. She knows a lot about Latin American dyes. And so we brought her in 92, 93, 94 to do different kinds of, of um, dye revival projects. And this gives you an idea, just, just look at the La Gama, no? the, all of the beautiful colors you can get, and then in this it says what part is used. I won't go into details and, and what the mordant is. And here's a picture of the 12 dyes that we were able to get stable use in, in um, Hidalgo, in the Valle del Mezquital. Enequén is very similar. El Enequén is muy parecido al Ixle. They both come from agaves, and they're fairly good to receive the dyes. What they've done is a, a nursery for Palo de Mora in uh, Campeche and for Chactecoc, also in the biosphere reserve of Calakmula, both of these. This is a very important dye in industry, even today, in la industria incluso. It's known in the world market as fustic, and that's where khaki comes from. The khaki, the original color of khaki is from the fustic tree. And so fortunately, it gives you a beautiful yellow. It's a very stable yellow, and it's still used in industry, curiously enough. And so at least it's being domesticated. Vamos. The indigo. Um, this would be logwood. Logwood is very similar. No, it's not similar to Brazil wood. They're very different. Logwood is only exists in Quintana Roo, Belize, and Campeche. That's what the that's what the pirates were after. Los piratas andaban tras el palo de Campeche, and that's how the country of Belize came about. Por eso nació Belize because the pirates couldn't penetrate Campeche, so they went around the Caribbean and invaded the land of Belize, which is still at war with Guatemala. They haven't signed a treaty. No han, no han este, Guatemala no acepta la existencia de Belize. No. Síguele. These are the colors that we got, the wood colors from Quintana Roo. Beautiful, this is from Caoba. This is, I mean, the color that, that mahogany gives you on cotton, look at how gorgeous it is. But what you have to do, what we did in Quintana Roo, we had the advantage that there was a very um, perceptive governor, había un gobernador, que en ese momento era muy bueno, se llama este Pedro Joaquín Colwell. Pedro, he was a very good governor. He had an agreement with the with the German Development Agency, and they brought in technicians to do a forest uh, a forest uh, management program that was incredible. And one of the things was that they we were able to use the the um, what's left after you you um, process the wood. Wood pulp or the the little pieces, acerin, the acerin, the sawdust, and that's what the dyers were using in the project in Quintana Roo. So you had sustainable use, you had certified wood, and you had the possibility of using the byproducts for the dyes. So that was that was a project that I felt good about. La que sigue. These are some examples. La que sigue of the colors. Look at how beautifully the corn leaves take color. No, muy bonito los colores que el maíz eh, este, puede tomar, las hojas de maíz. 
And then there's this project that we did um, with Mexican lacquer, which we worked with in Guerrero with Temalacatzingo, who and Juan Juan Vasquez is here. He was one of the participants of our project, and in Uruapan and Pátzcuaro. And La Que Sigue. These are pigments, and it comes later. A ver, so algodón, cotton. Cotton is a very difficult color to dye, uh, um, material to dye with. It does not accept the color by itself. Solito no acepta el color. You have to use a mordant, you have to pre-mordant. Tienes que abrir la fibra. The best, best fibers are protein fibers. That, those are ideal, wool and silk. They just love natural dyes. But cotton is like, uh, it just comes on the surface. Solo, solo agarra la superficie del algodón si no abres la fibra. And you have to use chemicals to open the fiber. So anyway, we have indigo, cochineal, and purpura that are very good dyes on, uh, well, indigo and purpura are very good on cotton, but not so much cochineal. Aquí tenemos son tintes de uso, they're pre-Hispanic long usage. The posahuancos that were talked about yesterday. La que sigue. I won't go into purpura too much. I just didn't take it out. La que sigue. Indigo is being grown in Niltepec, right below Juchitan. And they've had a lot of problems. It's a community where two families started killing each other off. And they were the two families that did indigo. Durante años, en los ochentas, estaban matando las dos familias. Y entonces, Casi se perdió, and now there are various projects going on. Hay más proyectos para el rescate del, del añil. Cochinilla, el vivero, Tlapano Chesley has been very important, muy importante. They haven't been successful in producing it, but yes, as a center for the diffusion and for training courses. Tlapano Chesley ha servido más como un centro de, de capacitación que de producción. La que sigue, púrpura, bueno, vámonos sobre púrpura porque ya, ya, ya lo saben, la que sigue. You saw this yesterday on the video, la que sigue, la que sigue. What's interesting about this, they talked about how it goes from white to yellow to green to violet. Well, indigo and púrpura are related chemically. Tienen un vínculo químico, el púrpura y el añil, porque son oxidación, redu reducción. It's by oxidation reduction. You need the sun and air, el oxígeno y el, eh, y el aire, perdón, el oxígeno y el sol, oxygen and sun are going to help to set. But indigo does need mordants. El indigo sí requiere mordentes y muchos. El púrpura, no. It's the fastest dye in the world. Es el, es el tinte más fijo del mundo. It's the only one that doesn't need pre mordantine or mordantine in general. Okay, well, these are traditional uses of púrpura in, in the clothing. And um, this is something we did in Xochislahuaca. What I'm wearing today is a weepy from Xochislahuaca where, where we worked with Ana Roquero and uh, different plants. La que sigue. That, I think that one is this one, most likely. And you get this wonderful, what cotton gives you are different hues. Lo que te da el algodón es, son, son tonos más eh, sutiles. You get su subtle tones, with, uh, which is a big difference with silk and, and, uh, and um, wool. However, they have a terrible problem with uh, resistance to light. Cuando tiñen en algodón, hay grandes problemas de, 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 del impacto de la luz. So, what we do is, para lavarlos, pues los lavamos inside out. Y, no, o sea, you put it inside out para que lo que se seque, as it dries, it's, it's not, the, the front isn't getting the direct sun. So, some of the dyes, you know, this one is practically gone. Este de aquí ya casi se perdió. So, 
the yellows are good, los amarillos también, los indigos están bien, la combinación, the combination of indigo and yellow is pretty good. This one is cochineal, the darker cochineal se perdió, tenía dos tonos de cochinilla, so you have to expect it, no, in, in the dyes on cotton. And I have an example, a ver la que sigue. Bueno, these are examples of what they were doing on. This is guabe, this one uh, I asked uh, Teofila to lend it to me. I worked with Teofila for years, who's there. And this has two dyes, tiene dos tintes, indigo, and the brown is not coyuchi, mangle, mangrove. However, mangle is protected. Mangle es una especie protegida. So we have been trying to get permission for the guaves who know how to cut the mangle to have a permit just like the, the uh, mistecos have because they don't over harvest it, no lo, they, no, no lo sobre explotan. What's the big, big problem with mangroves? What's happening in Quintana Roo? What's happening in Nayarit? Adios, clear cutting for the purpose of uh, tourist development, no? And what have they discovered? That when the hurricanes come, cuando llegan los huracanes, igual, yeah, arrasan con todo. So now, the, the, there is a much, much more conscientious effort to protect the mangroves. Hay mucho más conciencia de proteger los, los manglares. Sin embargo, realmente para el uso artesanal, pues no es, you don't use that much, no se usa tanto. However, because of the impact of tourism, it's like, no toquen los manglares, now no, don't touch them. So this is that delicate equi equilibrium that we have to find with the studies. I'm almost done. These are the wood dyes. So that everything, the wood dyes, lo que tienen la gran, gran ventaja de los tintes que provienen de maderas, or some cascaras, some of the um, cascaras, cascaras. Husks. Husks, not so much. I'll give you the example. You know pomegranate? The cascara of the pomegranate? The shell. The shell of the pomegranate. Rind. Many rinds, well not many, some rinds have incredible amounts of tannins. Tannins are what is used for uh, tanning. However, tannins are incredibly good natural mordants. And sometimes they have color and mordant. A veces color y mordente. So one of the things that we found in uh, Quintana Roo was that you could substitute chemical mordants for these kinds of rinds. And the great advantage of the trees is that they're full of tannins. They have their own. So this gives you an idea of colors. We won't go into that. The sarapes that I talked about yesterday, no? I mean, beautiful use of color wool, of course. So you get the pinks and the, and the reds and the, and the blues and all of that. Sorry. Uh, Songolica, the area where uh, Miguel Angel works, Martinez Sosme works, is full of, of, of flowers. However, many of them are in the wild. So we've been trying to tell the people, you know what, we've got to study some of these species before you start massively using them in, in wool. In, wool. in la Sierra de Songolica hay muchas flores que dan colores preciosos, pero no de todos estamos recomendando que los usen indiscriminadamente. Vámonos. Sempasuchi, the tajete species is very good. It gives you wonderful yellows, muy bueno, which is sempasuchi and um, uh, pericón. Vámonos. It's very good. Look at this for um, blacks, blacks from Kerkus, which is uh, oh, roble. Oak. 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 Oak is very good. La que sigue. Chamula, the chamula black. Do you know where the chamula black comes from? It's a mud. Es, es, un, es un recurso mineral, es un eh, madre, sería un, lo que encuentras en el agua, lodo. lodo, es un tipo de lodo, 
lleno de minerales con algún colorante. No lo hemos estudiado, we haven't studied it. And primero se acaba la prenda que el color. The, 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 the garment will end, finish, and the color is still there. Todavía está el color fuertísimo. La que sigue. This is uh, in Oaxaca, in Teotitlán, uh, where they put feathers. I noticed that Jacobo has a piece with the feathers. Ah, but well, that's another sort. Feathers love natural dyes. Why? Protein. Protein. Las, las plumas agarran los colores naturales. Bellísimo, precioso, porque es proteínica. And, y mientras no estés usando aves este, silvestres, if you're not using wild bird feathers, you know, and, and you're using domesticated animals, no hay problema con las plumas, so they're very good. This is with silk from uh, Oaxaca. I think they've been here to the feria in other years. No, they, it also, la que sigue, vamos. Beautiful tones on the silk. Um, this is for the use that used to be made for rebosos. The rebosos used to use um, to get black, which is a very difficult color in nature. They would take the old um, pieces of metal and let them just sit in water for weeks, which made it sort of stinky. And that would be the basis for black. Era la base de los, los fierros oxidados. And then this is, this is a, a lichen. The, and the lichen gives color and aroma. But lichens are the most delicate of all of the dye materials. De todos los tintes, los líquenes son los más delicados. La que sigue? This, these are old rebosos because it's been impossible to reproduce them. It ha sido imposible reproducirlos. They take years and years to grow. Tienen un crecimiento muy, muy, muy lento. Y tienen características, wonderful characteristics. So what Ana Roquero told the people, lo, lo que les dijo en Santa Maria, well, we have a little bit, but don't try not to use it. No lo utilicen. No? It's, again, por voluntad, good, good este, moral ethics, but not because there's a law that protects it. Like I see. And these, when we finished the course, the Ana Roquero's course, um, he, he put a, a rebozo into, died with cochineal into the, and won the National Artisan Award for, for revitalizing um, traditions that had been lost. Like I see. Colors, vámonos, porque... And these are the, here's the, what I'm talking about, the lichens, they're the most delicate. La que sigue. La que sigue. Just one last little thing on corporal paint that's used by dancers, by, they use it in uh, Pinotepa de Don Luis. And the example I have is from a fiesta that I was in, in um, the Huasteca years ago. You, you know the colorin? Well, la que sigue, gives the yellow. Beautiful yellow pigment. Extracción de la corteza, but you have to cut the, the tree, not the flower. However, it grows back. It's, it's a good plant. La corteza del, del colorin, la que sigue. Here we see them with oak black. El, el negro del quercus del, y el amarillo, no? And it's used as a pigment for the, for the uh, Semana Santa, la que sigue. And then this project that we had with the lacquer, with the lacas, and that was, they were all using, todos los pueblos estaban usando eh, minerales, which are natural, los minerales son naturales. But we wanted to see if it was possible to go back to natural pigments. Queríamos ver si podíamos trabajar pigmentos naturales. And uh, Bancomer Foundation, before Banamex Foundation entered folk art, we were working with, with Bancomer Foundation. And so they gave us money to bring together 
the artists of lacquer, of Mexican lacquer from Michoacan, Guerrero, and Chiapas. And we did one seminar in Chiapas, and then we went to Guerrero for the second one, and then we went to Michoacan for the third one. And in each seminar, we talked about the problems because it was caking off. Se estaba cayendo la laca. People were complaining that there was a problem of quality. So each one of these seminars that was done with the artisans and with the specialists, we would talk about the problems and then by sharing the knowledge of the artisans amongst themselves and some advice, we were able to understand what the most important ingredients for lacquer to be a good lacquer were. So one of them was the use of chia, the, you know, chia pets. <laughs> well, guess what? Chia oil extracted is 10 times more efficient than linseed oil, which is what it, it was substituted by. La linaza sustituyó a la chia. Well, the difference is that you need five kilos of chia seed for one liter of chia oil. Whereas in linseed, in linaza, hay mucha más, it has more, more oil in it, each seed. So the difference in price is like 20 pesos de linaza, a, lit, a litro, against 400 pesos de, de, de chia. So, but it makes a world of difference. And the other thing, la que sigue? The other thing was, how could we get these colors? No? So we went into the books and, and nos metimos a, a ver all of the old books that talked about lacquer. And all they did, lo único que hacían era enlistar, they would say, oh yes, and they used this and this and this and this. We found no recipes. Ni una receta. ¿Cómo se usa? ¿Cómo lo combinas? Y todo eso. So the artisans were left to do their own experimentation. They were left to experiment and we had ideas, teníamos información. And this was one of the very first uh, color combinations that came out of this coming back to natural pigments, which is cochineal and ochre. No? And we, we turned the life around for Temalacatzingo. Pudimos realmente incidir de manera positiva en Temalacatzingo con el rescate de los pigmentos naturales. Just for the record, nada más les voy a comentar que there is a running battle, hay una pequeña batalla entre Temalacatzingo y Olinala. But 600 years old, una batallita de 600 años. And um, eh, the people of Temela Katsingo have already, always been sort of stepped on by Olinala, who think that they're, because they speak Spanish. And Temela Katsingo used to be um, Nahuatl speaking, now they've lost it because they also want to be better. You know? So anyway, this project allowed Temela Katsingo to sort of get on the map, to be known, and their toys, which are marvelous. You know? So we were able to uh, give Temalacatzingo an edge, to darles una pequeña ventaja sobre Olinala, que tuvieran sus propias cosas. And Olinala has been trying to find out the formulas. <laughs> Olinala está como loco tratando de conseguir la fórmula del pigmento natural. Y Temalacatzingo dice, mm -mm. <laughs> no lo vamos a compartir. And so this, these are pictures of when we had them working together, Michoacán, Guerrero, uh, Chico Coronel from Olinalán. These are the colors. Yeah, okay. So this gives you an idea of how it's important to go back and to be more knowledgeable in, in what you want. No, yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. So I don't know if we have a couple of minutes for questions and answers. If I didn't tire you out, I got tired just giving it. <laughs> Lacquer work has been done in other places. I was just curious if, if, for example, in Eastern Europe where lacquer work exists, is it natural? Do you know? Well, lacquer 
is done especially Eastern Europe and, and Southeast Asia and, and Mexico. There are people who think that the lac Mexican lacquer came from Asia. No, it didn't. La laca is Mexicana. There is a Mexican lacquer. And it's the building up of layers and layers of dolomite, natural oils and, and um, ajes, a grease of a... Grasas, grasas would be... But it's not grease, really. It's wax, wax. Cera, es como una cera. So you have the natural materials in Mexico, and that's how the lacquer develop. You have natural materials in Asia. For instance, you have a bug that's cochineo and aje, the, the other insect, are related in Mexico. They're, they're like cousins. And the research you have in Southeast Asia, the bug has both things together, the wax and the color. And it's also used there. So nature gave the, the, the resource and humans discovered the resource. O sea, en la naturaleza se dio el recurso y fueron los seres humanos que descubrieron sus propiedades. That's why this is so fascinating. How did they know? And how did they know? ¿Cómo sabían que tenían que combinar las tierras con las grasas, con los aceites? You know, how do you, how do you work this? These are thousands of years of, of trial and error and finding the formulas. So, it's all natural. <laughs> you had a question. Yes. Oh. Oh, these, these are areas, and to talk to them about preserving the resources. At the same time, they need to feed their families. So how, how receptive are they to um, eco Well, eh, la pregunta es que cuando vamos a las comunidades y hablamos de sustentabilidad y las, y las comunidades necesitan alimentar a sus familias, Como le hacemos. One thing is how damaged the resources. ¿Qué tan, qué tan grave está la situación del recurso? Because then the government brings up the level of, of uh, the Species Act, the, the Endangered Species Act. ¿no? O sea, dependiendo del grado de deterioro o de amenaza, es el nivel de la norma oficial mexicana. But we live in a lawless land. Vivimos en un país con muchas leyes, well, lots of laws. And it's like a cultural thing of breaking the law, una cosa cultural de no seguirla. So it's easier to work in communities where they still have a sense of the future. Es más fácil trabajar en las comunidades donde todavía hay elementos internos de cohesión interna de preservación de recursos. And so that's one of the things that you size up when you're going to go into the community. It's one of the things that you evaluate. Will there be an advance or will there not be an The other thing is to work pilot projects, projects pilot. And to, by, by reason of some successes, then to be able to get ahead. La, la pregunta es que todo este trabajo que tenemos años haciendo, ¿qué está pasando para el futuro? Si hay otros grupos y otros jóvenes. The, uh, I mean, the country is in shambles. El país está despedazado. I mean, there are many communities I can't go to anymore. Hay zonas completas que no podemos ir. If, if we don't do something with security and with this whole drug thing, and the the uh, all of the passing of the armas, of the uh, armament and all of that, we've lost the country. It must be chunks and chunks and chunks of the country are lost. It's from the 80s when this project was very important, big, de los 80s, because there was a worldwide interest in resource management and in finding things. And I just don't see that anymore. No veo el interés. Como que son tanto los problemas. They're so big that, you know, you come and, oigan, 
y, y tal cosita y tal otra cosita. So we're, we're hoping, estamos esperanzados that there, that there can be movements, movimientos ciudadanos, citizen movements, to bring back a little bit of, of um, security, de seguridad. Viability, the economic viability, so that you could in fact uh, have a counterbalance to whatever else is going on. La viabilidad económica es la pregunta que qué tan factible es económicamente para contrarrestar. There was a revival project for indigo on the coast of Michoacán and Jalisco in the 80s, and and guess what? They said, yes, 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 sí, 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 traigan aquí su proyecto, and they grew the indigo and all of this and all of that. And the people managing the project, the two brothers managing the project, ran out as fast as they could because they realized that they were right in the middle of narco territory, territory and they were using the indigo project sort of to make things look... And one night, and the people who cut the leaves for the marijuana make more in one night's cutting than what it takes a year to grow, you know, 10 hectares of indigo that are going to be a couple of kilos. It, I don't want to make it sound like it's impossible. However, if the people really want to do it, they'll do it. Si la gente lo quiere hacer o si hay incentivos, we need, need more incentives. Well, what happened with Colombia? No? Thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars put into trying to substitute one thing for another. No? O sea, la sustitución. So Mexico is no longer considered USAID, but maybe these kinds of projects can be brought back. But you have to, and we have to pay well, and we have to pay. We have to pay the, the, the producers and the artisans for their efforts. Tenemos que pagar por el esfuerzo de usar las cosas sustentablemente. No, it's a different, uh, the, the amount of money that goes into it, no? Sí. Bueno, pues muchísimas gracias.